I thank you very much for having me here. Uh, as you know, for the past 27 years, it has been very, very difficult for the UPU to increase its budget based on the zero nominal growth, apart from uh, the decisions that were made in Abidjan that uh, added some money to the provident scheme. That had never happened. So consistently, it had become very difficult for the union to fund its various programs based on uh, the business plan that had been laid out in Abidjan. So the biggest challenge was to get members to go back to decide against the zero nominal growth principle to open up the ceiling, to enable the union to have additional resources to fund programs that would make the UPU more fit for purpose and to serve its members in a more effective way in a very competitive, globalized e-commerce world. The outcome of the Congress, I can say, was very positive. Some of the major topics, such as opening up of the UPU to the wider postal stakeholders, all the proposals that had been presented were approved, apart from the fact that uh, the funding of the experts who were supposed to chaperone those processes uh, could not be provided through the regular budget. There has been, however, commitments from a number of countries to fund the climate uh, action plan. And therefore, I can confidently say that uh, coupled with the decisions we made this morning to increase the budget at least by 1.6%, that would uh, give the union an additional almost 680,000 Swiss francs to fund uh, project programs in, uh, in, 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 in the emergency solidarity fund, as well as strengthening the UPU's IB cybersecurity capacity to deal with issues of cybersecurity, I can positively say that the outcome of the extraordinary Congress has been very, very successful. Uh, ideally, I would have been a lot happier if we had increased uh, the budget by the 4.6% that had been intended, 4.7 percent that had been uh, provided in Proposal 1, because that would have given the union uh, 1.8 million additional Swiss francs to fund programs under uh, Workstream A and Workstream B. Uh, if we had passed that specific option, then we would have actually had a surplus to focus on strengthening the human resource capacity of uh, the, the, the IB to deal with these very emerging demands from member countries. However, what we have gotten today is focusing on two major projects that the IB will be, 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 be undertaking. That is the one on cybersecurity and the one on the emergency solidarity fund. We were informed that in the last uh, uh, 10 years, out of 70 uh, emergencies that were reported, the I UPU was only able to deal with about 22, which literally is 34.1 percent of the challenges that were facing the, 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 the member countries in terms of uh, you know, pandemics, uh, typhoons, and, and earthquakes, and so on and so forth. And therefore, these resources will make it possible for the union to react and re to respond with more agility and in a timely manner to help countries that are faced by disasters to respond very, very quickly in rebuilding the apostle infrastructure to serve the global community. On the side of cybersecurity, you recall yesterday and even in Abidjan, we had intermittent interruptions on the Wi-Fi and internet connectivity. So if we can bolster the capacity of the UPU to strengthen its cybersecurity surveillance and management systems, it would make it possible for us to get our documents in good time, not to lose any time during discussions, which could then hamper our progress as a union.